What's up everybody? This is Ryan from Performville and today we are going to talk about another very common diagnosis and a little fix-it tip for you guys at home mostly. Uh, it's going to be shift solenoids on the 4L60E and 4L80E. Uh, these are very easy things to diagnose and repair, especially if it actually is your problem. And let's hope so, because if it's not, we got to dive a lot deeper. But for now, quick fix. So, most people don't understand shift solenoids. They think there's a computer chip in here, they're all computerized, they can make decisions, they can't. This is a 4L60E shift solenoid. And fortunately, they are the same for both A and B valves. Okay, A is your one, two, B is your two, three. Real quick, the one, two, not many people know this, but if you don't have fourth gear, the one, two does indeed affect fourth gear. And they work together on on or off, or both on or both off basis. The, any solenoid for a 4L60E you buy at AutoZone will work in either valve and plug into both slots in the valve body. Uh, the 4LA is a little bit different. Uh, this here, I have a B solenoid as an example, and it has a different plug-in, different length on the metal connector that holds it in, and uh, the A solenoid, which I don't have right now, looks very similar to a 60E solenoid, black plug and all that. Uh, these are two things you can't really mix up, so don't be scared to do that. Uh, the 60E, the only thing you can mess up is if you crisscross your wires, and I promise you that's very hard to do and very obvious, but it's a good prank to play on your buddies made them start out in fourth gear. So, back to that thing I said about making decisions in computer chips. This is a simple solenoid. Most people in their engines or their transmissions or what have you, these need to be told what to do. They can't make decisions. So right here, let's just break that myth. I have a solenoid all broken apart from a 4L60. And as you can see, it's basically a coil a spring and a ball and these are either on or off there is no in between and the PCM has to directly tell it what to do so nothing in your transmission on this valve body that everybody's so afraid of can actually make decisions okay uh, a certain amount of 12 volts is applied and then ground and it turns on and off and it works with the other solenoid to make four gears including reverse and everything else that's going on so I just wanted to show everybody that, how quite simple this actually is. Now, going back to the 4L60E, um, if you've ever come across uh, a P075 code, so we're going to have P0753 or P0758, or, or maybe even somewhere in between, you, you might throw a couple codes uh, if you throw a shift solenoid code. It's either going to be stuck on, stuck off, or some kind of circuit code which indicates a improper voltage of some sort or communication error. If that really is the case, which 99% of the time it is, because these are electronics, they go bad. It's very simple. The only tool you need after dropping the pan is something like a little red screwdriver like this. This is one of the best tools out there. We simply, under the car, let's say I have a code for solenoid A. So if you're looking under the car, this short valve is solenoid A. This long valve is solenoid B. This is your one, two, your two, three. Your one, two is one valve and a spring. It actually sits in here like this. Your two, three valve has the actual two, three valve. It sits here like this, no spring and a pilot valve, and that sits behind it. And these aren't resting quite on my valve body, so forgive me a little bit block near view. But this is essentially all that's in there. So nothing's gonna explode out at you, balls aren't gonna shoot everywhere if you attempt this repair. It is a very beginner, very easy repair, and GM has made it easy. So either case, A or B, you're simply just gonna take your screwdriver with the pan off, put your thumb under the clip so it doesn't pop out and fly away, and the one two valve will pop at you, the two three won't. But there you go, solenoid. When you're all done making the repair, simply plug the new one in and put your clip back in. That's really all there is to it. The trick to these problems is actually diagnosing it. So 
In short, just because your solenoid's working, it may detect a valve issue to where one of your two valves could be stuck and not operating properly. Um, very uncommon on the 4L60 to have the one, two, anything go wrong with that. It's very unlikely that happens. However, the two, three is usually the culprit. And uh, what, we, what we will have is a uh, no shift to third. You may have something funky going on the second. And that's usually what the 2-3 will produce. Um, you may be stuck in a gear in second or third. Um, the culprit for this usually is either the solenoid or this pilot valve. This little guy likes to get stuck more often than not. So this is one of the first things to check. Pop your solenoid out, stick your screwdriver in, and make sure the valve strokes. At least we can verify that. Now... Secondly, um, one of the things that also can happen is um, the solenoid is able to partially work. So just because it is working and the computer says it is, doesn't mean it actually is. Um, if your solenoids are very old, if your build has 200,000 miles on it, that ball that shoots back and forth has to seal. So it may get stuck, or it may partially seal because there's a little piece of dirt blocking it from sealing all the way or opening. Those are things to consider. So if you have some erratic shifts and are throwing this code, it's very possible that could be it. If you're stuck in a gear throwing these codes, very possible. Again, those are PO75, usually three or eight, and it could be other codes somewhere in between. Now let's talk about the 4L80 a little bit. Same principle, solenoid, even though it looks a little different, still the same design. Now the 80 is a little more difficult to service in the vehicle. Chances are you will have to drop the valve body itself because they aren't held in by simple little clips facing down anymore. They're actually held in by roll pins, okay? So same drill, both valve bodies are identical as you were looking at them the same way. We have A on my left and B on my right. Okay, for you guys watching, it would be on your right and this would be your left. You'd need a, a nice pair of skinny needle nose like this. If we flip this over, you'll see the access roll pins here. Now, dropping an 80 valve body really isn't that bad. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but it is a safe way to do it. Uh, if you were desperate or lazy, I suppose you could very carefully drill a hole or something, but I really wouldn't recommend that. Um, just drop the valve body. I promise you it's not bad. The valves also, they pretty much go in one way. And I'm probably not going to be able to do this holding it. But uh, you basically work that roll pin up. And here it comes. And that will shoot out of you a little bit. And this is only if you need to service the valve. Okay. These valves can get stuck. The springs do break in the 80s. And usually in the, the kits, the rebuild kits, they provide a spring uh, to replace this actual problematic one with. Slide it back in, push it in, put your roll pin in. You are good. As far as changing the solenoids go, simple. Instead of clips, they're held in by a T27 screw. So that's all you need for that about eight foot pounds of torque to put it back in and the wires will not cross they all plug in to each solenoid as they were intended to be um, some of the things to check that will affect solenoids and shift quality you know shifting in general are random misfires misfires in general uh, and your throttle position sensor if it is erratic or if there's an interference with it uh, other than that this is a very, very basic repair. I can't tell you how common it is. And as always, guys, electronics can fail. Um, these are pretty stout solenoids, but I, I've seen it more often than not. Don't get it confused with a shifting problem that is elsewhere, though. Um, there are many things that can cause you not to shift out of gear or have an erratic gear, such as, you know, discrepancies in your tune or... Uh, no speed signal, 
and several other things which are going to cause you to go in limp mode. Uh, the way to test for limp mode is your transmission will manually lock itself down in second or third gear and reverse, okay? Those are the only three gears you can select, and you have to do it manually. The transmission will absolutely not shift by itself if you were in this mode. You will have to manually start the vehicle, put it in D2, and move it up to D3 to make second and third, as well as reverse yourself, because the transmission isn't seeing any input from the PCM. It's a safe way to protect it uh, for you to figure out what's wrong and a diagnostic tool to help you solve the problem. So guys, I really hope uh, this helps you a lot. Um, I'll release a big list of trouble codes on our Facebook and Instagram for you to browse through, and they're readily available on Google. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to call me at 570-578-5686 for tech support. Thank you very much. See you next Tech Tip Tuesday.